when you're feeling goal oriented is when I find that I'm having lesser sort of fun, you know? It is absolutely sodden in here. Oh my whole body is just dripping with sweat right now. That is the hardest portage I've ever done in my life. And not really stopping to, to really, you know, enjoy. And I'm missing the beauty of what's right in front of me, you know? Tomogamy never, never fails to reward those who are, you know, willing to put in the work to, to get into it, to get into its heart. What an incredible, special place. So it's a little after 7 a.m. right now, and I'm just starting out on the access point of Mowat Landing uh, on the Montreal River, just sort of at the northeast corner, pretty much, of Lady Evelyn Lake. I'm gonna be out for about 12 to 13 days, hopefully, and I would like to do quite a large loop, and my goal is to paddle down Lady Evelyn Lake and get across sort of Diamond and Wakimica and then cut my way through the small chain of lakes that start to get up into the more high elevation Tomogamy country called the Masabi Range and from there into Florence Lake and then take a loop back through the Lady Evelyn River uh, coming out on the North Channel. I'm also hoping to hike Maple Mountain which is something that I've really wanted to do in this area for a long time. It's the highest point in Ontario, or the second highest point. Uh, so it's to have spectacular views around. This is gonna be by far the longest trip that I've done solo. So it's definitely gonna be a challenge. I'm familiar with some of the terrain and scenery, but not all of it. It's uh, rained hard overnight, and there is definitely some rain in the forecast the next couple days here, but it's pretty calm, a little misty this morning. Really beautiful, really quiet. Uh, and thankfully, checking the forecast, it feels like the winds are gonna be on my side for this first stretch here. Well, I've gotten past the sort of the river narrows of Lady Evelyn, and I'm now just sort of starting to come out onto the main body of the lake here. And it is really beautiful. And it is so quiet right now.
just looking over the map right now and no wonder I was feeling just so gassed at the end of that looking for this site to stop and take a break on. Uh, I started off at like 7.30 this morning and I got over to this site here to take this break and it's about 11.40, 11.45 and yeah, I paddled about 21 kilometers just flat out. That's really good. I was like thinking that maybe that this is where I would make camp for the night was to hopefully getting to Obisaga Narrows if the if the winds cooperated, but now it's like barely even lunchtime. So uh, I'm gonna take a nice, nice stop here, chill out, get some food, get some calories back into my body, rest myself up for a minute, but I'm definitely gonna continue on down the lake here and uh and yeah just see how far i can get here so really really great start to the trip you're getting pissed on with rain you might as well be out on the water paddling anyway I think I see the portage sign <laughs> at the end of Lady Elbow. Definitely won't be making it further than this lake today, but that's wild. been a serious serious day of paddling it was like 39 kilometers uh that for me is like superhuman amount i've never done anything like that so and that was solo uh i mean there was no portages there's just the one portage at the very beginning of the day just a short one and the rest of it was all was all just like flat water and it was calm conditions on lady Evelyn lake and when there was wind the wind was with me so you know all of that you know, was in my favor, but still just really, really big day. So uh, it's pretty awesome. That's really, really positioned me well for uh, the next stage of things. Pretty much gonna just sit back now. It's gonna be a super easy dinner tonight. I'm thinking chili, just always something on a rainy day, something like that, warm myself up, maybe some tea or some hot chocolate. Probably really early bed tonight. And yeah, feeling good about today and uh, feeling good about the start of the trip. So happy to be here. Mm. Oh. Mm. Got a bit of a chill on right now, which it's surprising because I was paddling all day in the rain and didn't feel any of that. And now that I've got myself into some comfy clothes and I'm actually getting some hot food into me, I'm feeling a little bit chilled. But no matter, 
going to jump straight into the straight into the tent today straight into the hammock after dinner more or less read myself to sleep warm up that way so no fire tonight sleep last night I was so exhausted uh, there is a wind blowing but it is a northeast wind and I'm heading southwest so that's good for me so just gonna bust up camp here and have some breakfast and start making my way down start making my way down Diamond Lake here so the plan for today is to work my way across Diamond here and then there's a couple of uh, short portages uh, across a really small lake I can't remember the name of it and then into Wakimika Lake and uh, from there across Wakimika to the west end of that lake and from there then I start to get into some of the the nitty-gritty with the portages and and a lot of the smaller chain of lakes that kind of get a little bit more high elevation up as you get into some of the more like high tomogamy country to the west I can't remember what my goal was to be at for day two, but I know I'm going to be past it. So I think I'm just going to paddle to Wakimika to start off the day here and then probably take a take a break before I, I start hitting those portages. And then we're just going to get going and, and, and see how far we get. See if I can bash out a couple of those and kind of get going a little bit into into some of that tougher stuff. So. Should be a good challenge. Mm. So one thing about my sight last night is that was unusual is when I arrived here it had all these signs posted up that said it was reserved as per the indigenous hunting rights of the area. And uh, yeah, that was really that was really cool. I've never seen that before. It's uh, really cool actually to just to see them exercising those ancestral rights. To you know, hunt and fish on the land as they did for centuries and millennia before, and it would have been cool to kind of run into them and have a just a little say hi. Obviously, I'm grateful to be out here uh, and paddling in such a special place. is about tomography but 
I feel the spirit here more even than say in, in other great places to, to paddle and be, you know? Uh, the forests, the bodies of water here, they're very special. And I find that I can feel that when I'm here. And it just is a beautiful place to be. It's a beautiful place to be a part of, a small part of. And that's all I gotta say about that. Now continuing up into sort of this new area of tomogamy. Uh, gaining a bit of elevation, moving up onto these chain of smaller lakes. My hopeful goal when I started out today was to get to Dorothy Lake. That is five lakes away from here. They are small lakes, but three of them have portages of about a kilometer or so between them. We'll see what the conditions like, see how tough the portages are. Oh, <laughs> it is absolutely sodden in here. Of course, uh, there, it's beautiful, but it is wet. I'm just not sure where I'm getting more soaked from, the rain that's coming down on me, or all this understory that I'm just swishing through and just <laughs> squeegeeing my legs with every time I brought by it. After my lunch stop, I was feeling a little cold been a little chilled, which isn't a great feeling when you're kind of in the middle of it like this, trying to trek through, get a little deeper, get to some sights. But feeling warmer, surprisingly, after walking this trail a couple of times this big food barrel on my back going uphill Pitcher plants. Wow. Well, I've gone through with the canoe on this one, and this one's a doozy. It is through a freaking bog for most of it. An amu's bush of what's to come. This trail here teases you with a couple of relatively hard bits of ground. But for the most part, this portage is basically navigating about a kilometer plus of a sphagnum moss bog. It is very muddy. And there are a lot of, there's cut logs laid down that to get you across the super squidgy bits where you'll sink right in. And of course, with all this rain, they are super freaking slick, just deadly. Only in Tomogamy. Three down. Wow. So 
looks like a nice vertical up to start. Holy crap. Oh, I don't know what it is about entomogamy. I guess because it's like the height of land sort of for Ontario. And, you know, most of what you're tripping through and portaging over is the remains of some like ancient mountain range, right? So it's like super rocky, really, really rugged, but it's just like, if, I don't know, the way it looks, even in the midst of the forest and these portages here, the mosses, the lichens that are growing off the rocks, like different colors, the incredible variety of like ferns and like plants and undergrowth and stuff that's, that's under here. It's uh, it's really, really amazing. Heavens to freaking Betsy, what is this? All of that elevation that I just climbed and climbed and gained, just freaking going all the way back down again. What is the point, Tamagami? What is the point? Hortense Lake. Four of five gone. We are going to make it to Dorothy after all. One more short paddle on Portage. And it is a short one. It's probably really hard, but it's short. Here at Dorothy Lake, campsite is set up. The rain let up as soon as I got here, which was really, really nice. Uh, I do not expect to see any sun today like last night, miraculously coming through. It is still very misty, very socked in, uh, but uh, it has stopped for now. And I did check the forecast on the Garmin uh, inReach that I carry and uh, it says tomorrow is supposed to be sunny with clouds and the next day after that's supposed to be sun so that would be amazing hopefully we're done with this rain because that was a little that was tough that was, that was tough going It's amazing how much more satisfying the simple pleasures are out here when you've had a really hard day you know like if today just so wet drenched getting rained on slogging through those portages uh to now be sitting at the end of it uh dry clothes feeling clean got a nice dry setup behind me you know you're gonna be warm you know you're gonna be comfortable going to bed got something hot to drink got something hot to eat coming up it just it just lifts your spirits and this spot is a really great staging ground because tomorrow is supposed to be some of the hardest slogging that there is uh, it's a very short portage tomorrow over onto Chapin Creek I think it is and then from there, it's a few hours, a couple hours, I think, going up that creek. It's not very far for distance, but I think it's tough going. I think it's gonna be fairly dry. Who knows with all the rain, maybe it's gonna be a little bit wetter, but there's gonna be a lot of dragging or lining the canoes. There's gonna be some beaver dams to lift over. Um, just, you know, just some more slower going. Uh, and then at the end of that, uh, have what 
apparently is, you know, perhaps the toughest portage in all of Tomogamy to look forward to and doing it from the hard direction, going from east to west. And uh, that's going up to Chapin Lake. It is a 1600 meter portage, but it gains something like 110 meters in elevation gain. Tomorrow's gonna be tough, uh, but today was also tough and got through it. Hopefully tomorrow at least I'll have better weather. That'd be nice to look forward to. Yeah, it's a nice sight here. There's heaps of firewood lying around, but not that I care tonight. Although like part of me is like almost wanting to have a fire just to be cheeky, but it's all wet. It'll take an effort to get going, which is okay if you're determined, but I'm not, <laughs> not tonight. So I'm gonna be really happy to have my dinner, have my hot chocolate crawl right into that hammock and read for a bit get another great sleep and be ready to pound out a hard day tomorrow bit of a developing situation to keep an eye on here. Yesterday my left shoe on the Sylvester Portage started to dissolve and come apart. It was already in kind of bad shape uh, and I kind of chanced it coming out here on this trip. It was starting to come apart on the heel a bit and then it really started to come up. I have this much duct tape left. If I see anybody on the trail at all, I am going to be flagging them to see what duct tape they have. And I will just keep lacing this and lacing this to get through this trip, so. Fingers crossed. Creek here is at least a little wider than I thought it would be, so that's a great sign. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. It is buggy in here, so we'll get moving. actually not so bad. It's probably the sun that's making me feel like I'm having such a great day so far. So that is lifting the spirits. Famous last words? Maybe. Well, 
it's very little paddling at this point. It is, oh, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. Uh. Found the first portage. Yeah, there's like there's like some culverts here, so there's clearly a, like a berm. Maybe this is some old forest road that is now grown over. I'm gonna take a look at it and check it out, which is pretty cool to see. You can ditch your paddle for almost all of that the further up you go. My God, it's just like you're just dragging the canoe the whole time. So uh, glad to be at sort of a checkpoint on here. And I'm thinking that on the other side of this portage, I should be maybe three quarters, two thirds, three quarters of the way through that. I just got back from the first run with the canoe. Now I'm back for that barrel right there. Holy shit. That is the hardest portage I've ever done in my life. Even though it's, you know, 1600 meters long, the first several hundred meters, for a few hundred meters of it are like pretty flat. So it really just gains in the back half of it to an insane degree. It's just mountain climbing with a canoe on your back. But there's also sections of just boot sucking mud and uh, can't, even, can't even speak right now. I'm so tired from that. So let's get at it with the second one. nice that it's well signed i'd be interested to know when the last time this portage has been cleared first find the trail step two be deceived initially by what great shape it looks in that's your first mistake three don't move too slowly well, the mosquitoes will get you. Four, say hello to the swamp. Five. Start working your way up a bouldery slope full of blowdown, broken trees. Oh. With just a little bit of flagging tape to mark your way. Six. Briefly stop to admire a beautiful, mossy, lush, green forest scenery. Seven, make peace with your maker as you begin the ascent of Mount Everest. It really gets you because the first part of the portage is already tough enough and pretty tiring. The fact that they just throw the then steepest freaking ascent that you would ever do with a canoe on top of you. After all of that crap, it's just freaking deviously cool. 
that's even too nice for it. It is like just sadistic. This is where it starts to get steep. It just keeps going up and up. Step eight, or wherever we are. Fake summit. Think you're at the top. But you still got a little more to give. Maybe not quite as hard with the food barrel. <laughs> but you burn so much energy getting through the first run with the canoe that tough to say. I see water. Is that a beautiful sight or what? Step eight, nine, ten. I don't even know. I lost count. Collapse with exhaustion. <sighs> From that direction. Never again. Oh my God. Remember this feeling, Chris. How it felt to be up on top of the world here, getting through that portage. Oh my goodness. It is nice to be here. I definitely am pushing on a bit here, but one nice thing is that I am losing elevation through this whole next chain of lakes here. Chapin is the highest and then it goes down from there. So that makes it a little, a little easier. There are very small lakes with very short portages. So I can actually move through them pretty quick. It's so quiet and beautiful in here. The waters are so clear. Last portage of the day. The longest one of this little stretch here at 400 meters. Of course, wouldn't be tomogamy. You look at the map, you're like, oh, cool. I lose 25 meters of elevation on this portage. Great. Of course, you also have to go up like 20 at the start. So then it's down 40. Oh my God. I am going to sleep so well tonight. Today's one of those days where you just roll into camp absolutely stupefied, where you just get there and you throw your stuff down and you're just like, my brain is dead. I don't even know what to do. So tired, but quickly bashed out camp chores, got everything set up, got my dinner on the go. My body is screaming for calories. Uh, I got too much sun today. I didn't stop for a proper lunch break, so that's on me. Tomorrow I will do that. Only made like maybe 
10K today, something like that. It's crazy. Maybe less. I don't know. It's crazy how little distance I did today. But it is grueling through this stretch here. And I'm going to have the best sleep tonight. And tomorrow is another day in tomogamy.